Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Page Fights, the show where we take your landing pages and put them up against heavyweight champions of converge rate optimization. I am your host, Tommy is my name, and we've got a great show planned for you today. We have over 250 submissions of your landing pages, and we're going to have them critiqued by some of the best of the best in the industry. We've narrowed it down to top 10, and we've changed the format around a little bit, so you're going to have deeper critiques um, for both the people who have been selected as semifinalists. They're going to get more insights out of this episode than in previous episodes, and also you at home are going to be able to see uh, more, get more knowledge out of that as well. Um, we have some really great prizes planned out for the winners of this show. Uh, the winner of Page Fights gets a free a uh, free subscription to Unbounce Pro 99 for free for six months. Um, entry into the Conversion XL optimization course that's going to be starting up in November. One free entry to that. And check this out, 90 minutes of consultation with Michael Agard of Content Verb. Really great stuff. I'm actually kind of jealous uh, of the prizes here. And I think it's going to be a good battle. We've got some really good submissions this time around. And uh, you're going to get a lot out of this episode, I think. I'm going to introduce our panelists. Actually, before I introduce our panelists, if you're not watching live right now on pagefights.com, go to pagefights.com forward slash with Michael, and you can subscribe um, to get updates for future episodes as well as exclusive Page Fights bonuses. And, and make sure you're also talking along on the hashtag on Twitter, Page Fights, hashtag Page Fights, and uh, we'll be able to field your questions and anything else from there. All right, so without any further ado, let's introduce our judges. First up, we have Ollie Gardner, the co-founder of Unbounce. This man has seen every landing page in the world, and he has opinions on every single one of them. Ollie, what's up? Welcome to Page Fights. I am going to kick the shit out of some landing pages today. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to seeing what you have to say today, brother. Next up, we have Pep Laya, the founder of Conversion XL and co-founder of Markitech, and my boss, so I can't say anything mean about him, unfortunately. Pep, what's up? Welcome to the show. Good to be here, and I'm not going to be saying anything mean either. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> Last, but finally not least, we have Michael Agard of Content Verb. Every time I see this guy, his beard gets more and more epic. Michael, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you very much, sir, and thank you for having me. And I will also be very, very diplomatic and nice. Oh, I severely <laughs> doubt that, and I hope that is not the case. <laughs> so the way the show is going to work this time around, guys, is that we have 10 pages. We're going to go into deeper critiques of each one of these pages, but we're also going to be a little nice, and we're trying to get, gonna give more constructive criticism. That's some feedback we've gotten in the past. So we'll be nice-ish. Um, and you guys ready to get into it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm going to bring up the first page here. It's iTelecenter. Congratulations for becoming a finalist, guys. It's no easy task, I'll tell you what, to narrow it down to just 10. That's a lot of submissions we have. So here we go, iTelecenter. Get an 800 private or 800 phone number for your business. Um, whose submission was this, or who picked this page to be in the finals? And tell me a little bit about why. Well, I think both uh, Ollie and I were on it, and... Um... I mean, personally, I, I like this page. I mean, mostly because of uh, the clarity in the in the copy. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, there's not much to uh, you know. There's not much to guess around with. You know, it's pretty clear everything. So uh, I thought it was it was a really really good uh, landing page. Uh, one of the things I might you know kind of critique here is uh, is, is some of the design stuff. I mean, it's it's, it's very purple, and maybe you could find something better than the than the the, the very happy, <laughs> satisfied dude, the stock photo of the dude behind the computer. But, uh, All right. In interesting, actually, whether it is stock. The, the link at the top has changed. Yesterday, the live chat said, talk to me. So I was wondering if it was actually that guy or oh. not. But um, that the subhead down here below the logo is the perfect phone solution for people on the go. People on the go is kind of vague. Like, who are the people? What, what kind of person needs this service? You know, is it a specific type of business person? That's a little vague. I do like the guy, though. You like the guy? <laughs> <laughs> this little running man guy? Yeah. <laughs> if I was animated? <laughs> but, I mean, my biggest problem with the page is, and Tommy scroll up, the page as the laptop the guy is using are both from 1997. <laughs> <laughs> so is his shirt. And it's right. fair. Easy stock photo. And, of course, if somebody wants to get an 800 number, how many options? Not one, but many options. 
They and and what does this say here? Well, if he were selling a bottle of water, he would be saying, saying, it's drinkable, it's in a bottle, it uh, quenches your thirst. Like, there's nothing, <laughs> nothing said here about why choose this service provider. And if you click on pricing, it's not the cheapest either. So, not a single reason to choose this guy. If you're the bottom, actually, there's something that's a little confusing. Um, Tom, if you scroll right down. Where are we going? Uh, right down until you see the app stuff. But for, uh, that's probably all the way down at the bottom. Keep going, keep going. It's long. Keep going there. So now it's, it's talking about your phone being a mobile office. So is this thing an app or is it a desktop solution? Uh, you can't even click on these these uh, buttons to go to the App Store, so I'm guessing that's not the primary objective. But it's kind of weird. Like I would highlight the fact that, and you get this free app that makes it even easier to be on the go. Blah blah blah. We'll route these one these 800 numbers direct to your phone. There's a, a strong benefit there if that's what's happening. It's kind of unclear, so I don't know if that is what's happening. Yeah, and also the uh, the features thing. If you go up a little bit, over 50 easy to use features, including. And then there's about 10 of them. So I'm thinking, you know, do I really need 50 features if they're not even going to talk about them here? And also, you know, it's just a couple of bullet points with, with, with different features. That doesn't really tell me that much. We have 12 awesome features and 38 shitty features. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And if exactly. you scroll to the very top where the, the key features are listed, it's also, you know, three is typically not very top, very top. So here... The fourth one, over 50 easy to use features. I mean, 50 is not already easy to use. It's w way too complicated, right? <laughs> yeah. And also the button, start my free trial versus this link view pricing. I would think the view pricing is way more yeah. you know, yeah. low commitment and easier yeah. to click than start start free trial. <laughs> There's no mention of uh, if my credit card is needed here and how much does it will it cost down the line. <laughs> so. Show pricing, and from there on, I can pick my yeah, plan. Yeah, now. yeah. But I want to I want to bring something up here too. Is um, we've got up here over a hundred thousand businesses served. This page doesn't look to me, anyways. And, and I've explored eight hundred phone numbers before. It doesn't look like something that comes from a a business that serves over a hundred thousand customers. Um, so what does it say? Then? That's something to think about. Oh, up here at the very top, underneath uh, the well, it's also really That's also really useful information, if it's true, because it's, it's positioned as a tagline there, which it's not. Yeah. You know, it's put under the logo, which you're kind of ignoring, because, OK, I see, a, I see a logo up there. I'm not going to look, because it's tiny text. Bring that information out, you know? But I mean, there's, there's lots of tests that have happened that show being very specific with your numeric values is better than just the generic over 100,000. Oh, there we go. I didn't even see it. It, yeah. yeah there. All right, guys. But but just just one last thing. I think Pep had a very very good point that if this is a, a you know a, a product, obviously where you're comparing a lot of different ones, and of course you know the, the, there might be some features and stuff, but price is going to be very important. So I think Pep has a beautiful point that that's one of the things you're going to be looking for. If you can't see it, you're going to start scrolling around to find it. All right, excellent. We're going to move on. Uh, I like the <clears throat> in general. Perhaps. Let's try this. There we go. Get sweet free or get sent free sweets and chocolates. This is actually uh, Michael's red-headed twin brother. <laughs> and so that, that's the perfect setup for what I was going to say because I was going to say that dude looks really, really creepy with the candy in his hand. Well, maybe that has to do with the fact that he looks like me. I'm not sure. <laughs> what? <Well, laughs> trying to give it to children? That's a <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So what's the first impression of this page, Pep? I'm going to go with you on this one. Well. It it's clear that they want to send me free chocolate, but <laughs> everything else is not not clear at all. So is it like a user testing dot com kind of thing where I can fill out service day in day out, or is it just service for this one guy? And also on the page it says big companies pay us a lot of money, so we buy you cheap chocolate. I, I love mean, the I want the money. <laughs> I want the money. Right. Um, Ollie, this was actually your pick. I so, love uh, this. And I would say I would dare anyone to say they don't understand the value proposition here, because if they do, I will punch them in the nuts. Well, but what about lead quality? It's like any idiot wants chocolate, but do do they need any idiots filling out stupid surveys? 
I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to try this. <laughs> no, oh, you I, can't. You can't. Because it's UK only, and you uh, won't find out until you fill out the first form. You go to <laughs> step number two, and then once once you try to enter your address, it says, eh. But I nowhere it's missing. Some really yeah. good, uh, some really good trust uh, badges here, though. Oh, and try to enter a fucking email address to the form. It does not accept 99% of email addresses. No. The, the, no. the email the validation is statistic. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very, very glad that I'm in Denmark, far away from Oli, because otherwise you would punch me in the nuts right now. Because it took me a while to understand the value proposition here. I mean, um, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm stupid. Maybe Pep and I are in our own category here. But yeah, I had to, 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 to you know, to, to work a little bit to understand this. And also, the, like, so I would, I would, I'm probably in the target audience for someone who would use this service maybe to recruit people, you know, to fill out stuff. But I'd be concerned because. Because I'm thinking, I'm getting a very well. Maybe uh, you know, a lot of people like sweets, but the people who are, I'm going to get to, that I can use in my surveys are absolutely people who want free sweets. So that, I would think that that is, you know, not giving me a totally uh, representative picture of my, uh, you know, sample audience. I, I just want to chocolate service. I just want to read out the headline, just so we can get this value prop straight. Get sent free sweets and chocolate mm -hmm. for completing a survey or entering competition. Well, here's here's my problem with this page. Right? <laughs> cool. I, mean, I didn't I, I throw my two cents in here. I don't know what companies I'm going to be surveyed on, right? I don't have any idea of like what types of people, like what types of questions, like. And this comes back to a question of lead quality that Pep was talking about. Like, it, I would like to see somewhere on this page the types of surveys I might be taking, so I know this might not be a waste of my time. If this is going to be something where I'm going to be doing surveys on like sweets, all right, cool. Something related around branding or candy companies, sure, but there's nothing here that helps me select like whether this is going to be different from any other um, you know, way. fill out a survey and get money type things. So I don't know. Hey Tommy, can you just do us a favor and click on the select your title? I imagine this is UK like stuff. They do a lot like Mr. Ms. Mrs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what a waste of time. We don't need that. But yeah, Oli, I, I agree. Of course, I think they want like, to when, know your gender here. <laughs> Although when you read it like that, of course it's clear, but uh, that, that's if you decide to sit down and say, I'm going to analyze this page and read every word, because when I first scan this page, there's some stuff that stands out and some that doesn't, and the stuff that doesn't stand out to me is for completing a survey or entering a competition, so what I read really quickly is sweets for free, uh, free sweets and chocolate, uh, what the fudge, give me my free sweets and a creepy guy with the candy, so that was my first time impression, so <laughs> it was only on my second or third view that I, I started to get into it, but you know that being said, I mean I, I, I do I do get it and I see it here. The, the, but there's I think there's a problem here also because there's, there's so this is a value proposition of course for people who want to get free sweets sent, and that's also what millennials are, are going for down here. So it's I, I I think there's a little bit of a problem here because you you're very much catering to people who want to get surprise sweets <laughs> sent, and that's also the testimonials at the bottom. Right. So, you um, know, and and the end you, the end user is me. We we do have to move end. on, guys. Uh, so the next uh, so we'll come back to this page maybe a little bit later. Oh, uh, just one more thing. One more thing. Just correct. Oh, Ollie. Okay. <laughs> uh, where does it say? Uh, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. All the way. There, there. We are the UK's biggest sweets rewards site. Is there more than one? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Sarah Dank. Uh, I hope I'm going to say Danks. Okay, we'll go with that. Bernie. Don't you know that Brits don't send free anything to people who punch each other's in the nuts? Just wanted to put that out there. Thank you, Sarah, for pointing that out. Hope you got the pun, though, Bernie. The nuts thing. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Huddle By. Free nuts. This is number three here. Let's see, who picked this page? Not me. I did. You did, Pep. Well, I like the way it looks, but what the hell is that? I read it three times, still don't know. Great yeah, I agree. Make great businesses. And I mean, it, it takes you a while to get into this. There's a lot of disconnect here. I mean, because so so great teams make great business. What's that supposed to make me do? It's supposed to make me go well. 
Yeah, I guess. You know, it doesn't really motivate me to keep on reading. And then, yeah, you know, what is Employee Perks Club? What does that mean? And if you scroll down below, they say well, something about boxes. What boxes? Like, yeah, I was, bo I was, what's I was in the box? Say that. I mean, yeah. What fucking box? Come on. Yeah, what box? And also, the thing is, uh, the guy, the founder, he's saying whether it's fantastic days out or discounts on a weekly sh on a weekly shop. It can potentially save each employee thousands of pounds throughout the year. So what he's giving a testimonial for here is a service that will save employees money. But that's not it because I want to sign up. Guy this really so happy happy still. No, so, he's angry. He's very angry. <laughs> <laughs> so let's 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 see what we can critique about this page. Like how how can we make this page better, right? Because well, it looks like from what I can see. Clarity of the well, value proposition. Number yes. one, and two. Yeah. The form is multi-column, three columns yeah. in the form. Yes. I mean, that's I typically that. a bad idea. This is the and, yeah, and also, so you, you have a combination of multi-column. You have a, a call to action that's kind of centered like a, a form field. You have in-field labels. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff wrong with the, with the, with the form here. I'd say there, there's a lot of potential. And also, what's the call to action? The text is, sign me up. Uh, I don't feel like getting signed up, guys. And also meet the brands. What does it mean? I mean, is that you know are these, these brands who use the service or what? Because they're talking about startups and stuff. I'm pretty sure that HP is not a startup. Yeah, I think I would like to see from this page kind of talk about that. This it's like a perks package, right? Like if if you are part of a startup, you have all sorts of perks, like free beer and snacks and stuff. Is that what this does, or is it like discounts? Like bring bring a little bit more clarity to this page. I think the design aesthetic overall is pretty good. Yeah. Um, well, they get they get into it when they talk about what's in the box. The thing is, you have to understand what the box is, and then in the box they talk about different offers and stuff. Right. Yeah. So, but it just it, it the whole in the box right. thing. I mean, that's very it's very kind of '90s communication, like you know what's inside the box. Because we we used to be thinking about software as being inside a box on a shelf. It's it's kind of dated. But if you go up. they can add some clarity here. So for everybody, this is the subhead below the first paragraph. For everybody at your company, it's free till 2015. Just replace the word it with what it is. There we go. Yeah, and, and look at the social media stuff. Uh, zero tweets, nine likes. Nobody cares about this stuff. Yeah. It's negative but growth, I'll, so get rid of that. And also the headline, great teams make great businesses. I mean, or make great business. That could be for anything. That could be for something keeping track of your hours, you know, hours yeah, 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 for mean, managing. Software, yeah, it could, be, it could be pretty much anything. So that, that really does, it, it, if it said, uh, you know, give your, uh, give your team uh, perks when they, you know, do good work or something, you'll be like, ah, you know, you'd be further along the line. That's a really shitty headline, by the way, but it's, you know, I think it would be more clear than, you know, great teams make great business. I, which I is not like really a headline. I would like to give the headline the 2014 Generic Business Statement Award. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and with that, we are going to move on to the next page. Here we go. Protein pancakes. Hi, protein pancakes. <laughs> Michael, go ahead and start this one off, please. Oh, man, there's, I mean, I'm sorry. I, I, I was talking about diplomacy and stuff earlier, but man, that just went out the window with this one. Uh, I, I think this is funny. There might be a niche audience that I'm not part of, so I maybe don't understand this, but I, I, I got a kick out of this one. I was had a lot of fun reading it. First of all, it re really reminds me of spammy 90s, you know, long form uh, landing page with, you know, 800 calls to actions and stuff in there. And also, so let's just start from the pop, from the top. So this is this is the headline: high protein pancakes. <laughs> so that really doesn't motivate me very much. And then I love the problem they're trying to solve. Have you stopped eating pancakes? Because typical pancake mix is all carbs. <laughs> Missing the proteins you need? Uh, it's, it's funny. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on here. If you scroll down a little bit, uh, I, I, I like also, so why should I try uh, uh, Cola Mekos? That's very hard to pronounce uh, for a Danish person like me anyways, protein pancakes. And it says a lot about it's the only pancake mix that does this and that, but that's not really special reasons to try it. That's just pretty much describing what's in, you know, what what, what the product is. So there, there's a little bit of disconnect there. And also, now we get to the good stuff. I love the call to action. You can try it risk free. <laughs> I love it. That makes that's kind of you know instead of making removing friction, you're putting friction in my head because I'm going, what the hell is this risk they're talking about? And you know, <laughs> where's the risk involved? I'm gonna you know. What and what about the pancake mix I have in the in my co uh, cupboard? Am I going to die from eating it? Sorry, just one more thing. And then I, I love the testimonials also here. So one guy is ripped like crazy, 
And the other guy is, I don't know, is Joe Ramone's father or something. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> and, and, and it's spelled wrong. They're, they're so easy. And I, I don't know. It doesn't look like, it looked like he was part of the guys who were in the risk zone, not the risk-free zone. <laughs> I don't know, sorry. But uh, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on here. Yeah, the I, risk I, is you end up looking like this guy. Uh, besides this uh, this uh, whole page looking like screaming, basically scam. If you click <laughs> on the uh, the call to action button, a pop up opens up, and the content doesn't fit into the thing. If you if you oh. scroll up, um, they've changed it. They uh, at least the the top button um, opened the stuff up inside a a pop up that. Um, Maybe they changed that. Well, uh, yesterday, they... slightly better now. That's good. But it's like, I mean, the weird thing here is also in the pop up, they're talking about a risk free 60 day trial thing. It's like, uh, this, this is not software they're offering me. It's, it's not a, you know, an accounting service or something. This is actually you know, just some, some mix they're going to send me. So. And just the fact that you have a guarantee policy does not make it risk free. Nope. <laughs> I, I would add that this is actually a pretty good passive income opportunity because you can get 150% back. So if you just do this, spend it back, you're making money. Ah, oh, awesome. I'm going to. But also, I mean, frequently asked questions. Is that the question? Guarantee? I mean, that's not really a question. So, I mean, there's just a lot of inconsistency here. And there, there are no question marks. So I don't know. It just seems weird. How? How long? How many? Children. <laughs> I would say though, if you're on the market to get high protein pancakes, this is great. <laughs> if, no, no, no. If you're in the market to get risk free high protein pancakes, then this is you. Fantastic. Guys, we're going to move on. Uh, hopefully. There we go. There we go. My pension choices. <laughs> when it comes to your pension <laughs> options, there is no such thing as one size fits all. Uh, Pat, we haven't started. We ha we haven't started with you in a little while. Start, kick this one off, please. All right. So it's hard to understand off the bat. How does this concern me? Because you're like lecturing. You know, what is the right thing? There is no one size fits all. And the the intro paragraph that should provide clarity is very hard to read. So what do you want me to? What is this site about? The clarity can be um, definitely improved. And now we get into this get free impartial pension consultation. Well, who's doing this? All these inline labels. Um, so it causes all kinds of stuff. Uh, the helpful stuff is on the on the right. Yes. On the on the white text and the blue background. Very hard to read. Does not draw attention at all. So the clarity really um, should be improved here. And those percentages there, they, they're not. Not actually. It doesn't seem that they're related to the the paragraph below them. So what are is it like progress bar? I'm like, think something yeah. is decreasing right. here. Well, I, I mean, I I, I I get this page. I get it when I read it, and I did like the. I mean, I mean, the the picture of the sweater is 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 completely stupid. I say. I mean, if you're supposed to use images to, to you know to help you find out what the page is about without reading the copy, then this would probably be about. Laundry or something, I don't know, but definitely not the you know definitely not the pension choices. So that I think is a little bit you know too creative. Right, like what but what I, is I, the I, problem that you are trying to solve for me here? Yeah, yeah can we talk oh. about that for a little bit, guys? Like the um because we talk a lot about like clarity and with the text, but we haven't really ever explored the idea of using visuals. Like we 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 talk about hero shots not being clear, but let's talk about how to select a hero shot that reinforces what that image is. Well, I'd say basically it has to be, well, I, what I just said before is, is I mean, if, if you'd have no copy on there, I, in my opinion, the image should be able to at least, you know, make you make you, you understand what the thing is about. I mean, at, at Elite Camp, at Pep's uh, uh, conference in Estonia this year, it was, it was uh, interesting because we got submissions in, in languages I didn't understand. We were looking at pages in Italian and Finnish and stuff. And that was interesting exercise because when you can't read the copy, can you figure out what the page is about? So that's, that's the task you're, I would say your hero image has to solve. Yeah, they're being a bit clever with that. I mean, that, they're kind of ringing their own bell with that. Just. But as as far as clarity, also, so if it would, I mean, uh, from having done tons of experiments, I mean, what like what Pep said, it's very very difficult to read a, a, a white font on a light blue background. You're very, it's, you're making it very challenging for me to read your copy. Also, 
Uh, I mean, the, the form is, is, is cool, but still, I mean, like Pep was saying, am I ready just to just after a picture of a sweater and, you know, and, and, and something about, you know, uh, not fitting all sizes or whatever, you know, am I ready to fill out a massive form like this one? I would, I would move the form over on the right, I would get the bullet points, or on the left, I'd get the, sorry, right and left, I can't figure it out. Uh, I would move the form on the right side, the bullets on the left, I'd put green check marks on there, I'd make sure that I don't have white copy on the colored background. Uh, kill the, the the sweater photo and uh, and also work on the form a little bit. I like the fact that you can actually because this is something that I've seen from user tests and split testing that if people don't understand why they have to give you their their information, they're not going to give it. They're going to be apprehensive about it. So actually having the explanation out there is cool, but the execution of it could be better because if you actually click the question mark, try and click the question mark, bam. Then we have, you know, I, I, and to me, that's that starts getting weird when 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 your forum starts doing stuff. You're not, you know. Uh, I, I like the inline validation because uh, if you actually start filling it out as as if you were a real person, I, I found it really helpful. It was weird to me that they require an address that was like two personal friction created, related yeah. creating, and I also I think they have an explanation for it actually. It was something about them, you know. It, it, yeah, sorry. Okay, right per perhaps so, but uh, I mean, not everybody will read your damn manual. Oh. Ollie, do you think that this might be a good case for a long, longer landing page to be able to explain all the benefits um, before length, you get to the I think point? the length is fine. You just need better and more readable copy here. Yeah. And also right. a free consultation. So c consulting services are not cheap. So how is, it th how is it that this is free? There must be a catch here. So this is the f question in my head and it's not answered anywhere. How, how, how come it's free? And also, what's going to happen? You know, I mean, one of the things I found out with landing pages is that we have a tendency to only focus on the landing page, but you really have to understand what happened before they got to the landing page, and you have to answer people's question is, what's going to happen if I say yes, and you're not answering that here? Uh, as, as far as I can see, I don't know what's going to happen. Are you, I, do I have to physically show up, or are you going to call me? What, what is it? That being said, the, the overall page, I, I submitted this one because it made me... It made me Feel pretty good when I when I'm insecure when I when even though you know there's a lot of things that could be better. Actually, the headline did engage me. I I liked it. Uh, it maybe uh, could be better, but I like the point that they're saying. You know, I I understood what they were saying was that you know you can't just go for you know the generic best practice. We have to fit this one to you. That's what I took from it anyway. Right on. Thank you, Michael. We're gonna move on to the next page here. Yeah. Attention, restaurant owners and managers. How to increase your profit 10% in the next 30 days? 15 minutes a week. <laughs> All these scam, spam, scam. <laughs> okay, so first of all, how to increase your profit 10% <clears throat> in the next 30 days, but only in 15 minutes a week. So why don't I just combine this into one hour? <laughs> and how is this ocean related to my restaurant business? I know. Why is there a beach? Is this like the whole you can live on a beach forever because you're making so much money? Ten percent. And why are there these white borders? I mean, it's obvious that this site was again built in 1997, and it's the font size is like eight pixels unreadable. This was built before the internet, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but again, I mean, we're, we're talking about, uh, they built it and they waited for the internet to get invented. And then, yes, now we can get it online. No, I mean, if, 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 if you didn't read the copy here, there's n absolutely nothing that tells me it has anything to do with restaurant on, uh, managers or owners. If we're talking about clarity in, in hero photos, this is like the, you know, pretty much as, right. as, as non-related as you get. Why do you name your service or, or the thing easy profit response system? Like this has scam written all over it. But wait, they have a privacy policy that says they hate spam and promise to keep your email address safe. Yeah, yeah. I love it. No, no. Don't worry about it. I've tested on this before. You throw the word spam in someone's face near an email form and it makes people think of spam when they weren't already. But <laughs> what I do like, the first bullet point, you can uh, make lunch times a thing of the past. <laughs> 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 so you can also lose weight. Yes. That's why the hey, uh, you can lose the second weight one does not weight. make sense in either. Launch new menu items, throngs of customers. What? Yeah, I don't get it. I don't. Get it. And also, I, li I liked you, you were talking about the easy profit uh, response system, but I, I I like the fact that it starts with unleash the power of. <laughs> and also, I mean, get instant access to what? I have no idea, man. I don't know what you're giving me. You're describing something, but you're not telling me what I'm going to get it. Discover how to 
uh, insert your email here, and then they just you know repeat it. So I'm sure that I understand that I have to insert a valid e email address. It's got to be valid so they can not spam you. Owner yeah. of this landing page also should sign up with Unbounce. Any template is better than this one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and also, so, and if you win, you get six months free. So I, I just want to point out one thing. Like all he said, I mean, I've run a lot of tests on this, and it's, and as far as I can see, every single time you put the word spam in there next to a field where you have to put in your email, that makes people go, "Whoa, are they going to spam me?" They weren't thinking <laughs> of it before. So the cool thing here is that the only thing you don't want to put in there is in is bolded. It's the only thing that stands out. <laughs> when I look at it, I don't even see privacy policy. I see, oh, I have to put in my email address. I scan down, and it's just spam. <laughs> I would think that might be a backfire. Right on. All right, we're going to move on, guys. Here we go. Senior quote insurance services. This is a nice page. I like this one. Um, Ollie, let's start with you on this one. Cheap Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, this one is kind of like save 50, 40, 50% 50 on supplement rates. I mean, so I'm thinking of pills here. Now I'm reading again, it's Medicare supplement. So it's kind, it's a little bit. Confusing there. This, I mean, this generic photo, albeit totally generic, would have been better on that that pension site. You would at least think of people who have pensions. Right. So steal that, put it on the other one. That's a great piece of feedback there, Pat. You actually picked this page. Tell me a little bit about why. Well, I like how uh, brief and to the point it is, and what a great call to action. It is very low commitment. <laughs> uh, so, day. stock photo obviously sucks ass. And, and also, I would lead with, what are you getting 40% off instead of just, say, 40%? Uh, and the first two lines, contact, senior code, blah, 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 that should not be there at all. And if you, if you want people to call you instead, I mean, uh, if you want actually people to call you, then you need to add more context rather than speak with a licensed agent. Well, I don't care about the license. I didn't know you need a license to be an agent. But anyways... Add some context. Who is this? What am I going to be talking about? How are you going to help me? That kind of stuff. And like the testimonial. I mean, side to side. Uh, no, no one's going to ever read that. Uh, it's no, I, 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 incredible. I, I want to argue that one. This the what? company. Kind of good. Again, this was needed on the last one because it seemed to be about comparison between the, the things you can get, the providers you can get, and that was the benefit of using that site. Again, here, knowing that you can compare these quotes is kind of good. Maybe it needs to be addressed a little bit more strongly, but that's valuable information when you get there. That's quite questionable. Well, I'm, I'm so completely confused here because it says something about our members say it's best, so I have to become a member. I thought I was going to save some money, but it's also a comparison site. And when you read the testimonial, it says that you know somebody's going to guide me through plans about you know the best insurance careers, no carriers in the country. Uh, I'm 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 confused here, uh, and I would think also that you like uh, people saying specificity. I mean, is uh, do they have the the products I'm looking for? You know, is it uh, exactly the the supplements or what? I, I'm 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 very confused by this page. I would change the word supplement though. Uh, it really does. Yeah, because it's actually uh, compare insurance products. It's not about supplements, right? It's it's get cheaper insurance for Medicare. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> I, I, but I, uh, with, I mean, my first uh, thought here was th they're going to help me save money on my medicine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that's kind of it, yeah. Sarah Danks is actually saying on Twitter right now, one judge thinks landing page is brief and to the point, another judge thinks it's a Viagra commercial. Does anyone ever win in page fights? And the answer, Sarah, is no. <laughs> no one ever wins in page fights. It's just it's just constant banter back and forth. This, um, this hat actually, Tommy. This hat actually it was kind of owned by Sarah at one point. Oh, okay. She stole it away from her in Minneapolis. Cool, cool. All right, we're gonna move on to the next page here. Equify. Check your website for broken areas and cut time spent on long cross browser tests. Uh, who picked this page? I did, because I mean the target market for it. Well, any yeah, conversion I picked, it too. I picked it too. Okay, excellent. Pep, we're going to start with you, and then Michael will uh, go over to you. Well, what do you like about this page? guy knows that there are so many cross-browser compatibility checking tools out there. So you want to really make, make a case here, like why use this tool. So the headline is so long, I'm not even going to read it. This 
cut the time spent on long cross-browser tests. That's the key, in my opinion, everything else. I, I already know what cross-browser testing is, right? And the, the four bullet points, which don't look like bullet points or are not bullet should be bullet points in, in, uh, except the last get one month free. That should be eliminated because your button already says it's free trial anyway. The video likes call to action, plus it's like four something minutes long. Nobody's going to uh, watch it. Um, so you need to make it uh, shorter, add some call to action here, and, and really focus on your why this over a browser stack or all these other ones. Yeah. Well, I, I think I think the main thing here is uh, I mean this one caught my interest like Pep was saying because I mean Pep and I are pretty much you know we we do this pretty much the same thing and we, we need the, uh, the a lot of the same tools and stuff. So what I thought was interesting with this one, the way I understood it is that this one will check your entire site, so you don't have to go through one page at a time. It automatically goes through the whole site and it compares to whatever uh, you know uh, browsers you want to compare it in, and then it automatically says, well, I found four out of 200 pages with errors, and you can go into those and you can see exactly. the errors and fix it. So that's the main benefit here. That's why I would choose this thing. So I think that the value proposition, this I see this all the time. The value proposition is in the copy. It's just hidden in the middle. So I have to say the the value proposition is 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 actually the 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 the, uh, the subheader. The third line in, or the subheader, whatever it is, uh, I'm not sure what you call it here, but it, you know, start automatic browser cup build, build. No, well, that's not really it. But I'd say, <laughs> sorry, confusing here. No, I'd say uh, something like, you know, uh, automatically uh, cross browser test your entire site, for example, something like that. You know, that that you know, then we have it. Uh, right, right. Well, you know, stop online. wasting all these hours by going through it manually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And also, so the bullet points, like Pep was saying, they're not they're, they're not really bullet points. So they're actually they're they're questions, you know. And you're and, you're trying to make me ask those questions. So if you wanted those to work, you'd need a little subheader that says uh, Equify answers these questions that you ask yourself every day or whatever, something like that. Plus, from having d done a lot of tests on this, I would definitely change around. Uh, switch around the video and the and and the bullet points because just what I've seen from a lot of tests is that people re it, it, it usually works better that you have the the bullets on the right side because that's kind of the, the logical way of scanning it and that you take that information in easier then you can choose to see the video and like Pep was saying it's very very long uh, yeah another and thing bullet is points I'd like to add also <laughs> if you read them I think it comes through that this is not written by a native English speaker because they're like yes. kind of clumsy and weird yes. and long so they could be uh, way uh, some you know add brevity add clarity yes. so I recommend you get a copywriter to turn this into benefits yeah and also just another thing is what do you get when you use Equify they're not really answering it I mean if someone said can you scroll down a little bit yeah so we can see all the points so I mean if I said so uh, what do I get when I use Equify you get keep it simple I mean it doesn't make sense what do you get uh, you get scan your website, <laughs> so there's an inconsistency yeah. there. You know, you need to, in the small details like that. Also, the picture at the bottom. I have no clue what that means. How does that yeah, help absolutely. you make a decision? Jason, there's a waste of space. You could add a call to action there, and yeah. that, that question, "What do you get?" Instead of that, just say what you get. Sum up the key benefit. Save yes. tons of time and money uh, wasted on you know testing yeah. or whatever. Jason on the hashtag um, page fights on Twitter is actually saying, "Show me which browsers are part of this uh, part of this testing." Yeah, right. well, that's that would be, be very interesting. Well, I mean, I would assume that every single browser. I mean, yeah. Well, down the bottom, doesn't do every browser. single browser. It's useless. Yeah. It's a cross-browser compatibility tool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Down the bottom, we have this diagram. Diagrams are useful, but. You have to infer what this is about. I would annotate this just so people know exactly what this is communicating because it's not strong enough on its own. I don't, I don't know why there's a cloud in there. I mean, like video to cloud. Don't put video in there. If it, I don't know. Do you give us a video? It's yeah. Like, do you turn a video into a cloud? <laughs> it evaporates. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a very yeah, good it's point. Annotate that. And if you're gonna use Odesk to translate into English, don't pay five dollars. Pay six dollars because. Some of the language at the top is really, really poor. Yeah, and uh, but but the, the 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 thing here is that uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that would be better on this uh, landing page, definitely. But again, like Pep was saying, we're 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 definitely in the target audience here, and I. I, I, I had an, you know, very early on, I was saying, wow, so this is something to do with cross-browser testing. I use that all the time. This might be an interesting tool. Let me spend the time it takes for me to actually understand this. So motivation might be high here. 
And I, as far as I can see, this is a tool that has a unique, uh, you know, uh, functionality that I can use. But you're not, you know, you're not, you're not helping me make that decision right away. Yeah. One thing I want to point out before we move on to the next one too is that, and you guys kind of touched on this a little bit, um, is that when you're doing the copywriting, it's always good to do another scan to cut out the ghost text. Um, it's just stuff that just sucks away from the copy. So brevity is always going to be the thing that makes it so you get to the point much faster. Check, check if you know, like like Pep was saying, if you know what cross browser testing is, you don't have to check the website for broken areas and cut it. You can or uh, just just get to the point. Um, all right, we're gonna move on. <coughs> Connectifier automatically see contact information and social profiles beside the recruiting sites you already use. Ollie, let's start you off or start us off here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, this again. This has changed again since since last night. Um, it's Maybe hard to feeling on. logo overload. Well, it's hard to automatically see contact information and social profiles be beside the recruiting sites you already use. Beside the sites, beside the people. Yeah, I, I don't get that. Beside the recruiting sites, I'm, I, I'm not using any recruiting sites right now. By the way, so. who am I in this instance? Am I a recruiter? Am I someone? Looking for an employee, um, support on three browsers. You know, of course it is. Well, you, you have the three major browsers. Yeah, it doesn't work on Safari. Who cares? But I, I don't think you need that. But you're already saying that it doesn't work on some. So you're suggesting negativity there. I would, I would take that out. If someone happens to be on Safari, have a targeted message for them saying, "Sorry, dude, go to Chrome." But yeah, I don't think you need that. But I also, I mean, I, I really have a hard time understanding what the hell the thing's going to do. It says something about automatically seeing contact info and social profiles, but I still don't understand how it uses, uh, how, how it really works. And it goes straight to try it now. But I'm like, well, I, I don't know what I'm going to try. So right. I don't feel it's just like randomly trying it. And also, it says used by hundreds of companies and agencies, including 25% of Fortune 100 companies. How do they use it? What do they use it for? And also the thing on the on the side. I mean, I after uh, close scrutiny and trying to click everything on there and finding out that you can't click anything, I found out that this is probably a sample of what the tool is going to show me. But first off, I thought this was the dude who was, you know, I thought it was trying to make it, you know, uh, seem more whatever uh, trustworthy, or whatever. Yeah, this is the I thought the exact same thing. I thought it's the the CEO's the LinkedIn yeah, profile. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm lost. Yeah. I, I, I have no idea what the thing's going to do. And I think, I just want to I want to hold off to the bottom here, guys uh, there is no bottom I think this is pretty much the whole page Okay so um, there's no credibility indicator there's no uh, Yeah there's no logos and clarity goes up 500 times Yeah but, there, but there's no there's no uh, credibility or trustworthiness or whatever uh, Danish translation here on the spot but uh, you know there's no company information in the bottom uh, and this seems very very spammy to me Here's here's the thing about this page because I know I actually know the um, the people who submitted it and I think that that's that maybe that biases me a little bit. There are other um, companies that are doing something similar. I believe if, my, if the value proposition of this page, like Reportive, for example, is I think something that does something similar. Um, uh, social or what Signals has evolved to HubSpot's product, they're starting to show more of the profile information from the person that you're emailing. Um, I think if you're able to, this is a very emerging space right here now. I, if um, you know, I think that's if that's what this is, and uh, being able to connect those things together with other popular products, maybe, um, and get a little bit of comparison contrast. What we've been talking about before is going to help with that a little bit. Hey, Tom, uh, they don't Apple. mention here that it's a, it's an extension on the browser, like a Chrome extension. Nowhere yeah. is it mentioned until you click on the damn button. Yeah. Oh, it's an extension? That already helped me so much. Now I'm just going to get it. Ollie, I'm going to cut you off there, Michael. Ollie, what are you saying? Uh, just the, the thing on the right, this is the key. So again, I'm going to talk about annotations. Simply put three arrows pointing this and explain why this is valuable information. Why, why when I see this, am I going to go, oh, this is so helpful to me yep. in what I'm doing? Like, really spell it out, because you have a lot of space here. Just, yeah, just give them a reason to care about that image and what they're going to see, and why is it different to report it? Because right. I haven't seen that in Gmail. Excellent. A lot of people, so... So we're going to move on. We've got one last page to go here, and then we're going to move into Q&A. Uh, if you want to join in on the Q&A, you can always do that on hashtag PageFights on Twitter, or if you're watching on PageFights.com on the Twitter box that's right next to the Hangout here. Um, poker charts. Ollie, you've got your sunglasses back on. I'm going to have you kick us off on this one, and then we're going to go Pep and then Michael. 
I got a poker chip as well. <laughs> oh! Uh, this I, I like. I like this page. Um, having being a poker player, I understand what's going on here. But some of the benefits aren't really coming up clearly enough. If you go to uh, which one is it? The second testimonial. If you go down. Okay. Yep. So it's talking about. It's telling me. The, the limits I'm playing at that I suck at, right? That's valuable information. When I'm playing 1-2, I'm terrible. I'm playing 5-10, I'm killing it. That's really good information to, to push me in the direction I should be playing. That's valuable information. Uh, if you go back to the top again, are you... Uh, someone jump in, and I had a thought and I've lost it. Go ahead, Pat. Um, I agree with Ollie that the, the, the clarity here um, is lacking. While well, overall the page looks great, but what does it help me do exactly? So how am I better when I use this tool? This is not spelled out properly. Um, I like the screenshots. Screenshots always help, especially if it's software. Um, and then the, the, the three features or whatever. The first two are like verbs, you know, you can play smarter, you can log and analyze, and then it's mobile friendly. That's that's not a benefit or something I can do. So have them be in a uniform style and mobile friendly, you can just attach it as a badge onto a screenshot or something. You don't need a special column for it. All right, Michael, go ahead, jump in there. Yeah, so a couple of different things. Can you uh, go up to the top? Okay, so uh, I, I think actually for this one, uh, the essential poker bank role management tool, ah, it's kind of boring and stuff. It maybe says kind of like w what it is, but what does it do? So in this case, I would think it would be actually interesting. You have to be careful with questions, but I think with this one, it would be interesting to actually have the headline be the question, are you really a consistent winner? You know, I mean, Ollie, being a poker player, isn't that something that would entice you? Wouldn't you want to know that? You could have that maybe. It might be a good way to start off, and then it's say. If you know, if you don't, you know, we can help you find out if you are. Well, I, well, I would, I would just, I would just take. Uh, are you really a consistent winner? And use that as a headline, and then, and then as a subheader, say, start tracking and analyzing your poker results today with poker charts. Then we know everything, or well, not everything, but we, we have a lot of clarity there. Uh, if if you, um, uh, yeah. So overall, when I first just got this page up on the screen. I, 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 I could see it had something to do with an app and something with the software, blah, blah, blah. But I thought, like, the, and it was, it was uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the design. It's, 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 it's cool, but it's very generic. So it took me a little bit just to find out that it was poker. So, it, again, if we're talking about the page, uh, you know, telling me what it is without me having to read the copy, then the first screenful, there really is very little that has to do with poker, except for the poker chip in the, in the logo. So that's just kind of, well, that was my reaction here anyway. But once yeah. that I started reading it, I said, ah, okay, it's a poker thing. And then I read the rest and I said, wow, this is, seems like a really, really cool tool. So, I mean, yeah, you could probably cut it down. But I would think that, uh, that you know, it probably does well, this landing page, I would think. But there's, you know, this thing you could improve, definitely. Yeah, I don't know. Where does it, where it kind of reside? Is it a download? Is it, you know, browser-based? It, it looks like it might be, but then is it an app? Mobile friends, it's probably an online a service, but it's a complex But also, uh, the, the call to action, I'd probably say start uh, uh, tracking and analyzing your pro results now. That, that's long, but something like that, you know, tell me what's in it for me, not just get started. That's, you know, that could be on any page, you know, that has something to do with the free trial. So, you know, make it specific, specific, damn it, <laughs> specific. <laughs> there we go. Specific for, uh, for my needs and, and, you know, the, the context in which I'm visiting this page. It'd be interesting here, we were talking about images before, and we're going to move on to Q&A in just a moment here, but we were talking about images before and where this is an analysis software, um, something that I would be interested in testing anyways, and of course this is just, you know, without looking at any analytics or anything like that, is taking, replacing this blue with like a poker table, right? This is where you're getting to that like, or, or someone playing a hand of poker. Um, because then you're reinforcing the value proposition right away without having to do extra, use extra yeah. text. I would add, like, how is it getting this data? Am I manually inputting this? Is this from me playing live and putting data in to my bankroll, or is this online? In which case, does it connect to Bodog? Does it connect to Yeah, is it post, post, post play, really? I play with my buddies and then use it, or what? Yeah, that's a very I good imagine point. it's connecting to software, or maybe scanning it. You know, sometimes they scan looking over your page, as you, over your table as you play. So how is it getting this data? I'd like yeah. to know. One, right. one thing that was interesting, I like that there was a testimonial, if you scroll down a little bit, 
that was that had a good point in there. He said, uh, "I can't believe I used I tried to track this stuff in Excel." That, that I mean that's that's that adds a lot of clarity because I'm I'm uh, I play some poker but I'm not a, you know a, a poker player like Ollie that would actually need the software but I can I can understand kind of you know what's going on here and so when I read that one that was interesting because I was saying well is this really a necessary tool but if dudes are sitting out there using spreadsheets to do this shit then of course this is awesome because you got it right on your phone it's right on the bottom it says no clunky software to download so there's some, a bit of clarity down the bottom by that CTA so I'd bring a little bit of that up there so people. You know, have a bit more of a sense of what it is, where it is, but the the connection. How does it get the data? That's the most important thing for me. Because you're saying it's got no more spreadsheets, but how is it doing that? Yeah, this would actually I, be a good testimonial to test as a value proposition. Um, I, I think. Sorry, if I just add one thing, just in general, I think that people have a tendency to say, "Well, we have a free trial, so we don't have to explain anything," because people are just going to try it and see if they like it. That is not the case. If it's not relevant to me, if I don't understand how it's going to help me, I don't give a shit if it's free or not. Right. I mean, that's something basic that people really need to understand. So it's like two bucks a month anyway. After that, so <laughs> free and two dollars is not. Oh yeah, but still, I mean, I mean, it seems like the basic assumption is that as long as it's free, I'm just going to try it. But no, I mean, I'm still investing my time in it. So, Signing you know, up is bigger than two dollars. Hey guys, we have to move on. We have ten minutes left of the show. Okay. So what we're going to do now is open it up to Q and A. And while the questions are being asked, you can ask on page fights our hashtag page fights on Twitter. And just to recap real quick, our top ten final or our top ten pages. Um, if you want to vote, go ahead and click on the voting widget. Up first we have iTelecenter at number one, Sweets for Free at number two, Huddle Buy at number three, High Protein Pancakes at number four, My Pension Choice is at number five, Attention Restaurant Owners and Managers at number six, Senior Quote at seven, Equify at 8, Connectifier 9, and Poker Charts at 10. We're going to open it up to Q&A now. So if you want to ask questions, go ahead and ask at the hashtag PageFights on Twitter. And let me just get my screen off here. Um, and let's just kind of do, while we're waiting for some questions to come in, let's do a recap of um, some, of the, some of the things that we learned today, right? Um, so there's a lot of talk about value and making sure that that's all very clear. Um, and we talked a little bit more about hero shots today, uh, which is good. Um, so yeah, Pep, can you get, add any insight to that? To some of the stuff that we learned today. Let's get these questions. Clarity above all. Yep. Um, <laughs> fantastic insight. <laughs> there we go. I love it. I love it. So the first question. Well, I, I, uh, oh, go ahead, Michael. Well, I mean, just I mean, I'm, I'm just I mean, think in hypotheses instead of just going. Wouldn't it be fun if we did that, or I'm sure that this would do this, or wouldn't it be interesting to do that, or let's settle this argument instead of having that as a basis for what you're putting up on your page. Then you know, have, put it into to a hypothesis. If I do this, people will react like that, and they will end up doing this, which will increase my conversion rates. Put it in there, and if that seems like a reasonable idea, then yes, go with it. If it doesn't, then you know. Come up with a better hypothesis, you know. So if so, if your your if your thing is that uh, by saying it's risk free, I can sell more uh, high protein pancake mix and get you know make more money. If that seems reasonable, well then that's what you should go with. If it doesn't sound that plausible, well then maybe you should find out something else, you know. So cause and effect. Right on, Pep. You had actually talked about when, uh, on here. We had talked about uh, a consultation. I believe it was on the senior quotes. Yeah. Um, where you got the free consultation, and someone actually asked on Twitter, "What's wrong with the free trial consultation?" I see a lot of top marketers, lawyers, and coaches use them. Um, oh yeah, I mean, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, free consultation is good. The question is, what are the hesitation and doubts and questions that pop into the mind of the customer as they're reading it? There's nothing free in this world, so there must be a catch. Maybe I'm afraid of the catch. So if you explain, it's no obligation, no blah, 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 30-minute consultation. If you want further consultation, it's going to cost a million pounds an hour. Yeah. Well, well Pep is right here. It's, it's about managing expectations. It's about telling what's going to happen after I put in my information and say, yes, I want this. I need to know that. 
uh, how long is it going to take? You know, uh, how much commitment is in there for me? Are you going to spam me for the rest of my life? Are you going to show up <laughs> at my door? You know, whatever. How you know? I mean, uh, do I have to show up physically? Are we going to meet? Blah 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 blah. Is it you know? Is it on Skype? Is it on telephone? There's so many different questions that you would have to you know that you could potentially answer to make me you know understand what the hell I'm getting. What what am I signing up for? You don't want me to say I didn't sign up for this. You right. want me to say this was exactly what I signed up for because I understood it. Yeah, that, one of the things when I when I was consulting, I had a lot of I did a lot of free consultations, and I found that when just for me personally, when I started putting some parameters around it, like well, I'll give you a half an hour, right, and you knew exactly what to expect. That's when I started to see a, a little bit more of an uptick in my leads, um, and that's because people know what to expect. We need parameters, I think, as as people, and um, that can be very very helpful. And um, also. Just, can I add one thing? Just one, one thing. With forms, think of them as a as a dialogue. There, you know. There's. I mean, yeah. nobody. I, I've never met a person who says, "I love filling out forms just for the fuck of it." I love filling out forms. Nobody does that. They don't like it, but they will do it if they can get to something good on the other side. So there's a dialogue. You have to. And even if it's free, it's not free. I'm investing. I'm giving you all my information. I'm giving you my time and so on and so forth. What are you giving me in return? You have you have to settle it. It's managing expectations. Yeah, that's the conversation aspect of landing pages. I think is a very good point that doesn't get talked about nearly enough. Um, and it's because, like, it, someone actually said this on Twitter earlier. You need to be able to answer the questions that the person is having in their head when they're when they're reading this page. Yeah, um, before they ask the question, you have to have it answered already. Yeah. So you do qualitative research, or you 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 go into like Joanna said last uh, two times ago. You go look at testimonials places like on different sites where people are talking about the similar product and you can find those questions that have been answered for them in those testimonials. You can bring them back and you can answer those questions in your copy. Uh, but you have to you have to do some kind of research to find out what those questions are. Yeah. Pep, you're actually a big you, you talk about qualitative research quite a bit here too. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about that process of like the customer development process because I think a lot of landing page when people create these pages we're creating them in a vacuum. Um, we've certainly seen that with some of the pages we've gotten here on this episode and in the past. Um, what sort of qualitative feedback do you think people should be asking for, looking for? Right, so you want to figure out what are the questions, what is the discussion going on inside the mind of the prospect as they're going through your site. So you want to do multiple things. You want to do user testing, you have people use your site while commenting everything out loud as they're using it, as they're filling out the form. Two, you can use on-site service like Qualaroo to uh, ask questions. Hey, what are the you know what's holding you back from taking action on this page, on this specific page? And you can do also post-service. So people who took action, you ask them, hey, before you took action, you know what kind of hesitations did you have? And and of course you can do phone interviews, blah blah blah. Talk to your support people. And once you put all that together, you'll start getting insights. Excellent. So what well, what are the things that I is it's very easy to do. I mean, if if you have people who talk who are on on support, people on, on the sales team, whatever, they talk to your customers all the time. If you go, that's one of the first things I do when I consult for a new company. I go straight down and say, can I can I listen in on uh, in customer service? Can I talk to them? The first thing I say is, what are the top five questions you guys get? If if they're selling, if their business is run through a website and people call them to ask them these five questions, that means they're not getting that information on the website. And so uh, right there is you know a starting point. Right on. We really? got I'm gonna, quick, oh, go ahead, just a really quick, easy way to do this. Take a screenshot of your page, go to usabilityhub.com, do a five-second test. You just put it in there. You ask a question. You can do a simple question like, what is this page about? I was just doing it yesterday, and the, the, the responses you get are kind of crazy. So it really helps you work on that clarity because you see what people are inferring. So that a lot of time, they're gonna, in five seconds, they're going to see that image. They're going to make a, an inference, and they're going to say, well, it was about... About clothing, well, no, it was about pensions or whatever it was. So it's a usabilityhub.com. Go check that out. It's useful. Excellent. And we're going to do a one-minute, actually, I'm about two minutes overdue on this, a one-minute warning for voting to be closed. Um, and we're going to be tallying up the votes. There are two more questions that I'm going to ask here. Um, one of them I'm going to answer myself because it was already answered in the last one. Um, someone asked, uh, Justina asked, what is your opinion on questions for headlines and Joanna actually talked about that a couple episodes back, so you can watch that at pagefights.com forward slash with Joanna, or with hyphen Joanna. Otherwise, I can answer. <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, the questions for headlines typically, I mean, and this is going to vary from copywriter to copywriter, but for, in my opinion, it's a good starting place for you as a copywriter, but you should probably go dig a little bit deeper. Generally speaking, I feel that it's a little bit lazy um, if that's the first thing that you're running um, because you should be able to answer that question in the copy itself. Uh, go ahead, Michael. No, I was just going to say something similar. I'm just saying that, you know, what we want to do is supervise our prospects' thinking. You know, we want them to go down a specific path. If you ask an open question, you know, it's very hard to supervise their thinking. Where are their thoughts going to go? Are they going to think of a competitor or what? So if you're going to ask questions, it has to be something where you're damn sure that people are going to go, yes, I want it, you know? Yeah. Uh, and also, you know, in most cases, th th I know this from my own behavior. If you think about your behavior, and I'm talking to everybody watching this, uh, what are you go what are you looking for? Are you looking for answers or more questions? You know, and it's easier to answer uh, uh, questions with answers than with more questions. So I'd say be very careful with uh, with with relying on 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 questions as uh, you know as as headlines. And it's, it's this kind of pseudo psychology thing that if you challenge the brain, if you ask it a question, it will not stop till it has the answer. I've tested questions. A lot of time in headlines, and very, very, very few cases have I seen it work better than a clear value proposition, a clear benefit answering the question, why should I care? Yeah. Ollie, you've actually talked about um, click momentum too before in the past. Um, do you think it might be if you're if you're leading with the question and the ad and then going over to the landing page? Exactly. I was gonna say the same thing for uh, email subject line. Sometimes yeah. that's a good a good mechanism to get someone to open an email, so use it at that point. Then you need to start having a conversation that we talked about. In your email, you have a lot of opportunity, not like an ad, to have a conversation. And you have to follow. That momentum has to carry through to your page where you continue the same style of conversation. But yeah, you headline uh, questions are great to tease people to open something. They don't It's extra work for them when you do it on the landing page itself. So yeah, I, I would stick that upstream a little bit. All right, fantastic. And we have one more question, and then we're getting the, uh, the, the top three here, which is exciting. Um, should you ever use stock photos for a landing page? First part of the question. Second part of the question, what are some good image sources if you don't have the budget to get your own taken? Pep. Yes, if it's good. <laughs> uh, it's very hard to find. If you want to find a good stock photo from, let's say, iStock Photos, be prepared to spend three full days. Yeah, it takes a long time. But I, I think one of the things here is again, I mean, it's it's hard to answer questions like this with 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 the the definitive answer that's going to be the truth for it. It really depends on context. So, you know, again, you have to have the data. You have to talk to your, your clients. You know, you have to uh, have your hypotheses and stuff. And in the con in uh, motivation, consider that. You know, there's so many different things. So, so it's very hard. I would never say never use stock photos. Never ask questions. Never do this. Always do that. Right. I'd say it really depends. I could say that my research tells me that you have to be careful with questions and that they rarely work. That doesn't mean I'm going to say you're never going to do it. The same with stock photos. Yeah, and I want to recommend, too, if you are going to go the stock photo route, make sure you run each photo through tineye.com to make sure that not a million other people are uh, using that same photo. Um, the technology exists now where we can find out just how many other people are using that same photo, and uh, you want to avoid a debacle like what happened back in 2005. Gateway and Dell both used the same stock photo of uh, a girl on their computer, back to school computer promotions. You want to avoid situations like that and um, re the thing about stock photos to remember is that everybody can find them. So you need to make sure that you're, um, you're, you're, you're going to be kind of unique in that way, in the way that you're using it. And maybe plan to use a good photo down the road. I mean, fake it till you make, till you make it at some, in some ways. I mean, if, if you I mean, test it, I hate saying that as a blanket term, but if, if your yeah. photo is helping, and you know an investment in a really original photo might be really worth it down the road. Yeah. Well, I've, I've seen cases where, where using uh, just graphics, you know, icons is way better than, uh, than you know, stock photos of humans. So, um, right. Interesting. Well, that's, I mean, that's a really good discussion. I'm actually writing an article about that for Conversion XL right now, just to give a little plug. Um, and we'll, uh, that's going to be launching sometime next week. So go over to Conversion XL, and you'll be able to find that soon. Um, OK, so we have our top three which is really good. Uh, you guys ready to hear this? Do it. Okay, good. Yeah. Sweets for free is number three. And let me just kind of cue this up here. Thanks, Brian. Right. Because he... <laughs> he looks like Michael. Yes, of Michael. course. <laughs> Except he's not wearing Speedos. He, uh, he forgot that detail. <laughs> um, 
iTelecenter is number two. Can we get those uh, screenshots up? I'm not seeing them. Let's see. Hold on a second here. I got to... There we go. We'll just do this. So... Go back on the three. Got to find it here. Sweets for free. It's number three. Congratulations, guys. I Telecenter is number two. Congratulations for making it this far. And our number one site is Poker Charts. Congratulations. You guys are going to be winning six months free of Unbounce Pro 99, a 90-minute consultation with Michael Agard of Content Verve, and <laughs> free entry into the Conversion Excel conversion course happening <laughs> in November. Um, fantastic, fantastic. And I'm super happy for you guys. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Oh, so we're going to come to a close now. If you want to become a PageFights subscriber, go ahead and go to pagefights.com to know about future episodes that are coming out. You can sign up right here at the bottom. And also, we're asking, trying to get some more feedback on the page fights, from the PageFights audience so we can develop the show a little bit further and make it right for you. Um, if you go to pagefights.com forward slash survey, and Tia is going to be tweeting it out on the Unbounce account as well, um, we'd love to get your feedback on how you'd like to see the show evolve. Um, we know a lot of you have been watching since the very beginning. And thank you so much. This is a this has been a really interesting project for us, and uh, hopefully you're getting a lot out of it. So, thanks so much, guys. And anyone have any closing thoughts you'd like? I to do. I do. Uh, I heard on Twitter someone said I need a housekeeper. <laughs> so, uh, if anyone wants to volunteer, uh, if you're in Montreal, come by and we can clean it <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend, guys, and thank you so much for watching.